So in this case, I'm going to remove the sprue from the sides and the back, but I'm going to leave it up front because the uh, pendants and stripes will cover that easily enough. The other three pieces of sprue did not come out easily. I definitely want to be gentle about this because there is a danger. Ooh. Not only stabbing yourself, of course, with the freshest blade you've ever used, but also in ripping through the plastic as well. So I'm going to apply a little pressure to this guy for a long while. Maybe the next 20 minutes or so, it'll probably what it'll take. And, uh, yeah. Alright, so I'm pretty sure I skipped this step, which was to drill the hole in the bottom of the ship and simply attach this bit of brass tubing with a bit of super glue. Apologies if that is not in the edit. It was a simple process. I took the piece of brass that I wanted for it and taking the bit that fit, I manually just drilled straight through until you got the hole and then it's a really nice tight fit. However, I am concerned about this uh, supporting the entire weight of the ship of course. So I'm going to reinforce the bottom area and build that up. The main wire is going to go through the bottom here obviously. And the main reason I put that in now was because I got to think about lighting the secondary hull here. Originally, what I did on the first edition of this kit was to uh, glue down the bit of LED tape at the back there in the hangar bay so it was above the surface, and then basically just ran those four segments and tied them around the post here in the middle so it was floating in the middle of the ship. In this case, what I'd like to do is uh, bring that up a level. So I was thinking that originally, because this was just pointing up, there were shadows on the side and the bottom, and it didn't look great. So my next thought was to take the uh, long piece of the stand for the kit, glue it down at the back, and then run the LED tape on both sides of this so it's pointing up and down in the hull. The problem with that is, as we saw in the nacelle, is that you'd have the shadow going along the seam line which would make it look a little worse. So my next idea is to instead of putting it horizontal, put it vertical, hang it out in the back or in the middle here. You could even use a piece of clear sprue or clear styrene for this which might even be better because that will extend the entire way across. And that is pretty much what I'm going to do at this point. So what I'll wind up doing is cutting a clear piece of styrene that will fit this length and then we'll wrap the LED tape around the sides. To light up the bottom, there's not really too much of a way to do that. Actually, now that I'm thinking even more clearly, is that if I can mount this piece to the brass in the middle there, wrap the LED tape around the sides, and then just like in the nacelles, put a 10 millimeter LED here pointing backwards, I think that will give the best possible uh, look to this overall. Yeah, definitely. However, how to attach it to this, that's not quite so clear to me at this point. Perhaps a slice here, going down. Yep, that looks like the way to go about it. So originally this guide was only going to be about lighting the kit. However, obviously there are things you need to take into consideration with the rest of the build when you go to customize your kit itself. So let's see how fine a slot we can get here. Probably could have done that with the regular X-Acto, I bet. It's actually a little too thick and wobbly. A single stroke may have been the better deal. In fact, I want to do it this way. Let me 
make that a little deeper. And we'll make sure this fits on the top. And this way as well. So there's a little bit of a potential trouble spot. That fits neatly in between the pylons. Almost too neatly. However, taking that into consideration, that means I can work around it, which is going to be perfect. So this will, in fact, work out well. And it looks like that's about dead center in the hull overall. So, what do we need here? We need one, two, three, four, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's actually kind of bend this in the middle. Where is this going to go? There we are. I don't want this to bend on an LED itself, or do I? Right next to the resistor. So yeah, doing it exactly in half puts one LED facing backwards. So maybe that'll work out and I won't have to put a 10 millimeter there after all. So when you initially put the LED tape down, do it relatively lightly. Then once you're actually ready to commit to where it's at, then you can really press down. Then of course here, we've got the post. And I think this is gonna work well. not quite parallel to the hull line however that shouldn't be too much of a problem I don't think the tape goes inside of here I believe it's three segments so let's cut off three and test fit them here so that just about reaches all the way Cut four instead. Pretty sure four is too long. Yeah, you really can't have this overlapping itself like this, and that's going to overlap itself by at least one LED. So three is the way to go. So the next year decision will be do you want the dark spot to be up at the top of the neck, as in this case? Or do you want it to be at the bottom, where glow from elsewhere may help illuminate that whole area? Overall, I think you definitely got to go with putting it in the bottom. It also allows you a little space to run the wire out. And I'm going to save this until it's almost time to put all of this together. What I want to concentrate on right now is this guy. I think I need to cut the slot a slightly different angle. It's curving a little too far upwards for my tastes. That'll be better. And to keep that in place, I'll glue it. However, not before I solder the power leads up. That would be nice to actually test how well this could work. The single LED may just be enough to light up that back. I don't know where I'm going to have to run the uh, power here to. It should be, be too far, however. I cut several inches of wire just to make sure that I've got enough coverage here. Soldering iron to power. 